But there is also another former member of Trump's inner circle facing justice. Steve Bannon is expected to surrender to state prosecutors in New York tomorrow. This development comes after he was indicted on charges related to a fundraising effort to build the wall on the southern border. CNN's Kara Scanal is tracking this one for us. Kara, what are you learning about this latest Steve Bannon legal situation? Well, good morning, Kate. So sources tell me that Steve Bannon will surrender tomorrow here in New York. Well, he will face charges related to that effort to raise money for a border wall along the U.S. southern border. Now, Bannon, you may recall, was indicted on federal charges relating to this very same conduct back in August of 2020. He was then pardoned by former President Donald Trump just as he was leaving office. That's when the Manhattan District Attorney launched its investigation looking into this same conduct. Now, according to the federal prosecutors, Bannon and his uh, co-conspirators had raised more than $25 million for this We Build the Wall effort. Uh, but they say, the prosecutors say that Bannon and the others had then siphoned away at least a million dollars that they used to cover some personal expenses. Now, Bannon pleaded not guilty and was never charged, and that case never went through. Uh, Trump then pardoned him, but you know, state charges are not covered by a federal pardon. And the fact that he that he was never fully prosecuted means that there is not an issue of double jeopardy here, at least according to numerous lawyers I've spoken with. So Bannon will be in court tomorrow facing these charges. Uh, he has called them phony and says that this is just another partisan political weaponization of the criminal justice system. And these charges come just two months after Bannon was convicted in Washington, D.C., on charges that he was found guilty of contempt of Congress for failing to comply with a subpoena by the House Select Committee investigating January 6th. Kate? It's great to see you, Kara. Thank you so much for bringing that to us. I really appreciate it. Joining me now for more on all of this is CNN senior law enforcement analyst Andrew McCabe, CNN legal and national security analyst Kerry Cordero, and CNN political and national security analyst David Sanger. Thanks, guys, all for being here. We're going to talk about Steve Bannon in just a second, but this new detail from the Washington Post about these, what more detail about what was in these highly classified documents picked up at Mar-a-Lago. David, I wanted to ask you about that first. There's a list of known and suspected nuclear nations, of course, nine of them. But which country could this be about? Well, as you say, Kate, there, there are nine known nuclear weapon states, and then countries like Iran, which are seeking nuclear weapons. We believe the Iranians deny that, but certainly are putting together the, the material for it. Uh, so they're a nuclear aspirant. Um, seems unlikely that the president would have documents about uh, allies who have nuclear weapons. Britain, France, Israel, um, strikes me that the most likely, but not the only possibility, would be Iran or North Korea. We know that he held on to some of his letters from Kim Jong-un, the so-called uh, love letters back and forth on the summit. Uh, President uh, Trump was very determined to make the case that he had succeeded with North Korea, even though they didn't give up a single weapon. Uh, during his time, which was, of course, the goal. And he was very determined to show that his sanctions against Iran were working, even though by the time he left, they were getting closer to the bomb than they had ever been. So it seems that those are two of the most likely. China, of course, always a possibility. Absolutely. Carrie, this document, according to the reporting, was found, just to make sure everyone knows it, the timing, I think, is important, was found and retrieved during that search of Mar-a-Lago. So this is a document, at least at least a document or more than one document, that Trump held on to despite multiple requests from the archives for months to return. Right, Why I would think... he hold on to this information? Well... I think that's one of the big questions. It's certainly probably one of the questions that the Justice Department and the FBI are trying to investigate why he was hanging on to them, whether he was doing anything with them or whether they were just uh, residing at his residence. But I think it also underscores, Kate, the reason why the FBI needed to execute this search and why the Justice Department made the decision to go to the judge and get a warrant under probable cause to be able to execute the search. Because the high level of classification, the sensitive nature of the documents indicates that even though they had engaged with the former president 
president's team for so much time, uh, many, many, many months, that the significant level of classification and the national security implications of him hanging on to these documents just demanded that they finally go in and seize them. So that I look at the the seizure of these documents and the high level classification and the fact that now we're learning uh, what at least some of the documents were about just to underscore the reason why they had to take this investigative step. Andrew, what do you think about that? Oh, I think that's absolutely right. I think the the seriousness of the documents um, it eliminates any question about whether or not the department and the FBI actually had to go in with a search, which you'll recall at the time was perceived as this overly aggressive move that was taken, you know, um, kind of out of the blue without any sort of uh, appropriate wind up. Uh, of course, we now know that that's not true, right? We know that the parties were not negotiating in good faith. We know that the folks on the Trump team were uh, misleading the government, apparently, at several points in, in, the, uh, in the exchange. They had resisted the return of these documents for, you know, basically a year and a half. Knowing what was in there, they absolutely had to go in and recover this material. It's essential to national security. David, regardless of the, his motivation or those around him for keeping the document, do you think there could be a real impact going forward? I mean, other nations now know a former U.S. president had these highly sensitive documents at his house. I mean, and it's described as a foreign government's nuclear defense readiness. Well, you know, it uh, depends in, in large part on what country it is and how determined they may have been to try to get some of this information if the information isn't already partly out in the public realm. Just because something is uh, classified does not mean that it hasn't already been, you know, written about. Obviously, there's been a lot written about U.S. operations against uh, North Korea, mm -hmm. certainly against Iran. Um, but the fact that these documents, which were uh, at least some of them, uh, marked sensitive compartmentalized information. Some of them, we believe, uh, may have pointed to human sources. We're behind a, basically a single padlock in the basement of uh, a country club, even if it's the president's own country club uh, or ex-presidents, uh, does suggest that somebody who was launching a significant operation might have gotten to them. And of course, the big mystery is still what was in those sleeves of secret information where we couldn't find the documents. And uh, uh, were, are they actually missing? Have they already been returned to the government? Could they be in somebody else's hands? And all those questions need to be answered, and that's why this is getting so complicated for, uh, for President Trump. Absolutely. So, uh, and, Andy, on Steve Bannon, he's expected to surrender to face state charges in New York tomorrow. I, I want to read the statement that Bannon's statement in response to all of this once again, saying they're coming after all of us, not only President Trump and myself. I am never going to stop fighting. In fact, I have not yet begun to fight. They will have to kill me first. Bannon's reaction to this. You and I have talked about the impact of incendiary language like this. What does this do? Well, I mean, this is what Steve Bannon has to traffic in, right? This is it's this kind of language that Steve Bannon uses to attract viewers to his programs, whatever those might be, and to attract support to what he's interested in. And ultimately, as we know from uh, from the allegations in this case, uh, to attract funding to support himself. So it is, this is what he appeals to, this, I am standing up the lone man against the government or maybe in tandem with uh, the former president and therefore you should support me. We know there's nothing to that, certainly in the case of this criminal investigation, which I should add, Kate, this is not going to be your average state level fraud case. This is a case that was developed carefully over time at the federal level with all the resources that has to offer. It's a case that the feds have now uh, have convicted two of Bannon's former co-defendants in, either one of whom might decide to benefit themselves by now testifying against Bannon in a state matter. Um, so this, and I'm quite confident that the feds are sharing the information that they've developed and their witnesses and that sort of thing with the uh, Manhattan DA. So this is a very serious case that New York is apparently going to move forward with, and he faces significant jeopardy. Yeah, and Carrie, what do you think of the legal case that he could, I mean, much more to learn, but what do you think of the legal case he's, he's up against? 
Well, I think the first part is, is I'm curious to see what the indictment actually charges, right? So it's very hard to assess what the consequences will be if we don't actually see what the indictment. And so um, once that comes out, then we'll get a sense as to um, the amounts involved, the number of charges that are against him. Um, that The charging document may reveal information about um, giving clues about what witnesses might be willing to testify against him. So I think once we have that charging document, we'll know so much more.